The next gland which we are discussing is actually a heterocrine gland and that is pancreas. Pancreas is a heterocrine gland and the reason why it is known as heterocrine gland is because it has endocrine as well as exocrine part. So its exocrine part produces which are known as Achinal cells and these cells they secrete the pancreatic juice which helps in digestion and this juice is poured into the duodenum with the help of a duct. So this part produces some secretion and that secretion is uh, released through a duct and the endocrine part which produces the hormones, these are a large number of epithelial cells which are called islets of Langerhans, named after the scientist Paul Langerhans. So that is why these are called islets of Langerhans. The number of these cells which are there, that is about 1 to 2 million. And each islet of Langerhan, each islet has about 3000 cells. So there are many islets of Langerhans which are scattered in the connective tissue between these akinol cells. So there are acne, akinol cells are there and in between these akinol cells there is connective tissue. And in the connective tissue are these islets of Langerhans. That is why pancreas is a heterocrine gland as it has these two parts. The location and the size of pancreas. Location is in the loop of duodenum. If you are able to recall the structure of digestive system from the stomach part starts the small intestine. The first part of small intestine is duodenum. So from here this loop of duodenum which is formed, this loop of duodenum has pancreas. So this pancreas which is present here is a long gland. And it pours its secretion into this duodenum. The secretions are poured together from liver as well as from pancreas. So we are not getting into details of that. But here the secretion which is coming into duodenum is of the pancreatic juice which contains all the digestive enzymes. So this is the location we say loop of duodenum. Size pancreas is the second largest gland. The first one is liver. This is the second largest gland of our body and its length is about 12 to 15 centimeters and it weighs about 85 grams. So it is a large gland and this is the location. These islets of Langerhans, islets of Langerhans have four main types of cells. First cell are called alpha cells and these alpha cells are also known as oxyphil cells. So oxyphil is another name which is given to these alpha cells. Second type of cells are called beta cells. Third type of cells are called gamma cells. And fourth are known as delta cells. Now we will take up the hormones and everything in detail. But here we need to understand what these cells do. Alpha cells produce a hormone which is called glucagon. So it secretes glucagon. Beta cells, they secrete insulin. Gamma cells are the precursors of alpha and beta cells. Precursors of alpha and beta cells. That means 
they are going to produce the new alpha and beta cells or they're going to replace the old alpha and beta cells. So from here, these first two cells will originate and delta cells secrete somatostatin. So these are the four main cells which are present and their function. All these hormones which are produced by pancreas or islets of Langerhans, hormones of islets of Langerhans are polypeptide hormones. They are all polypeptide. We will talk about these hormones in detail, but quickly, glucagon and insulin, they are antagonistic. Their action is just opposite of each other. We have, uh, we know that glucose is converted, extra glucose gets converted into glycogen. And this reaction or this conversion is regulated by insulin and that is why insulin is considered as hypoglycemic hormone it is going to reduce the blood sugar if it increases beyond the normal limit and if there is less glucose in the blood then glucagon is going to bring about the reverse reaction so this is done by glucagon that means it helps in breakdown of glycogen to release glucose in the blood so that blood glucose level can be maintained. And these two hormones are acting on the same reaction but in the opposite direction. Insulin would convert glucose to glycogen and glucagon would help in conversion of glycogen to glucose. And when two hormones act on the same process but in the opposite direction, we call it antagonistic action. And both are regulating the blood sugar level. The normal blood sugar which is uh, maintained in our body and we are talking about the uh, value which is uh, a fasting value. Glucose can be calculated at any time. One is called fasting value, then is post meal and then there is a third thing which is called a random value. So 80 to 100 milligrams of glucose per 100 milliliters of blood. This is what is the value which is a fasting value and if this is maintained that means these hormones are working in their normal manner. Now we will talk of these two hormones separately then hyper and hyposecretion.